Well, we're going to have our last teaching linked to the Resurrection Sunday teachings. Uh, we had a couple before, and then we actually had uh, one last Sunday morning, and then had the Lord's Supper this morning. So this one's a little different. We'll just kind of review the appearances of Christ that are made mention of in Scripture after he rose from the dead. So we'll start in 1 Corinthians 15, but then we're going to bounce to three other passages of Scripture, kind of hit them fairly quickly, and I think it will, um, it all makes sense. But we start off in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Paul is doing the speaking. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. In other words, you, you were just kidding. You, you, weren't, you weren't serious about it. Verse 3, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, now that's Peter, but that, see, that's in Aramaic, Cephas, uh, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. In other words, they've died. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Verse 8, Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now Paul will continue on, and there will be a teaching on the importance of the resurrection, and preaching the resurrection, and how it affects your priorities, your future, your morals, you just, the, the resurrection, of course, in Christ changes us uh, completely. All we want to see here to start with are some of these appearances after Jesus rose from the dead. Now I'm going to read a few other passages and then we're going to do our best to just kind of put them in order uh, in our minds. But you will notice here that he emphasized that everything that happened to Jesus was according to the scriptures. That he is... he. Uh, he died according to the scriptures, he's buried, he rose again according to the scriptures, and then there is this proof that he really did rise again. This was not a rumor, uh, the, the, these are eyewitness accounts of folks who, most of who were still alive at that time, that the Holy Spirit uh, is speaking through Paul at this time. So let's, uh, from here... Let's go back to Matthew 28, and that's what we, we went over uh, last Sunday. And we'll just remind ourselves of a few things in Matthew 28. In Matthew 28, beginning at verse 1, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week, began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like the lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and the, 
and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Uh, if we continue in that chapter, uh, we see something that happens several weeks later in Galilee, beginning at verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And the, those events are taking place in Galilee. The first events take place in Judea. Remember, 75 miles apart, going to take at least three days hard walking uh, to get there. So some of these post-resurrection appearances are in Judea. Some are in Galilee. In fact, he appears to many more people in Galilee than he did in Judea. Let's, uh, let's go now to Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke 24. And let's see where I need to start reading here. All right, let's just add a few. Let's pick it up in Luke 24, verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13. It says, Behold, two of them, and we're talking about some disciples of Christ, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened, and so it, while, so it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. In other words, the Lord did not permit them to recognize him until a certain point. It says, He said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one, whose name was Cleopas, uh, Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And don't you love the way Jesus, you know, he's, he wants us, that when Jesus asks questions, he already knows the answers. He, <clears throat> he said, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Remember, it's the Feast of First Fruits and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It says, yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all what the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That must have been quite a teaching, huh? Verse 28. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. And now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. 
and they knew him. And he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while we talked, while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? Verse 33. So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. In other words, by the time they got back, uh, Christ had appeared to Simon Peter. They told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that, he, that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Then... When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Jesus well, let me just keep reading. Verse 44, he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued from power from on high. Now, we've, we've got time passing in these, in these. We're going to be here, and then we're going to be in Galilee, and then we're going to be back in Judea. Hang in there with me and let's go to John and then we'll put these events in order. Let's go to John chapter 20. John 20. We're going to discover that Mary Magdalene was the one who was so busy, she actually ends up at the tomb three times. Sometimes by herself, sometimes in a group. In John chapter 20... It says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, that's John, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. <clears throat> now all of these are true statements, but we know that there were other women there as well. So when they scattered, they went in different directions to try and find uh, you know, to get the word out to the disciples. It says, Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. They both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. So John was faster in his running. It says, he stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and believed. Now this is John's personal testimony to us. He says, you know, in other words, I outran him, I saw, I looked in, I didn't go in, Peter, he just went right in, so I went on in too. And he says, I was convinced that Jesus was risen from the dead when I saw that scene, when I saw the things that were there. And he says, that's when I believed in the risen Savior. It says, for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Verse 11, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. 
And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. In other words, the way is now wide open for sinful man to come in the presence of holy God if they'll come through the sacrifice of Jesus. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. And then we have verse 19. It says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So he he has them receive the illumination of the Holy Spirit. It's not Pentecost yet. This is not the power, but this is that that now they they can grasp the scripture. And they understand the authority and the purpose. Uh, they have, they've been given the power to declare the word of God with authority. Let's keep going. Verse 24. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. And so he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. It says, After eight days... His disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. And then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, and yet have believed. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you you may have life in his name. You know, we are part of those who are the blessed. We have not seen Jesus uh, in the flesh, And yet we have met Jesus and we have surrendered to him and we are a part of him and we've been born again and we've been filled with his spirit. We know his presence, we know his voice, but we are those, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now I could read other accounts of the resurrected Christ, but that's enough to kind of put them in order because, you know, they come at us so quickly it's like, and you notice the emphasis of the Holy Spirit through one individual uh, is one way and then through another, and you have to put all four accounts together, and then you've got a pretty good view of what's happening. Remember, Scripture interprets Scripture. So let me just, just list these before our, our time constraints. We've run out of time. The appearances of Christ after the resurrection, when you put them all together, We are told that the very first individual that gets to see the risen Christ is Mary Magdalene. 
And it is so early, Christ has not yet ascended into heaven to present his sacrifice, to present literally his blood in the altar on heaven. Uh, by the time the next group of women see him, he's already back. He's already taken care of that. But he tells Mary, he says, I'm not yet ascended, don't hang on to me. But when he sees the others who had been with Mary, they'd all been there earlier, remember? And then they, they split up when they were told by the angel. So Mary's not with them at that time, and she comes back. She's actually going to be present at, that, uh, at the burial site three times. But we have Mary Magdalene is the first to see the risen Lord. The next are the group of women uh, that are mentioned in that Matthew 28 that we emphasized so much last week. And remember the, there was this command, go to Galilee, go to Galilee, go to Galilee. Boy, it took them well over a week before they got on the road to Galilee. But Jesus had prophesied that, had told them that's what they were supposed to do. That's where they were to meet him. But they were kind of dragging their feet a little bit until he really made it clear. He says, I, I really want to meet with you in Galilee. I know this is Judea, but in Galilee there was a greater freedom and more ministry could take place. After the women, the next one mentioned <coughs> is Peter referenced as Cephas. Now we don't have the actual account, we just have the declaration. And we read that with those two who were on the road to Emmaus. Remember when the, after they meet the Lord and they come back, and it's going to be a while, isn't it? I mean, it's seven miles. It takes you a little while to, to get there and then to be able to get back into town. But by the time they get back, Peter has seen the risen Lord. So you, you have Mary Magdalene who gets to see the risen Lord. Then it says the women get to see the risen Lord. You have Peter gets to see the risen Lord. The next are the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. The next that are emphasized, and, and I'm just pulling, you notice, from the scriptures that we read, you know, trying to put them in order, we, we have the ten apostles. In other words, there's no Thomas. But we know there are others there in that you have the, the two from Emmaus. They're present. In other words, they, they, not only the ten apostles, it's just the ten apostles without Thomas, but at least the two from Emmaus are there as well. So you have Jesus appearing, and this is where they get really spooked. And of course, Jesus chose for most of his body, his glorified body, to be healed and not to bear the marks that he had. Because Isaiah said that his visage, in other words, his face and all, was more marred than any other man. They plucked out his beard, and then there was the crown of thorns, he was beaten. You couldn't recognize who he was. If you had seen him 24 hours previous and then you saw his body hanging on the cross, if you didn't see uh, the signboard there, you would not know who that was. Uh, literally, he was that messed up. He had gone through a scourging, so his back is all torn up. He had gone through the beatings with the rods and the fists. He, he just, he was a mess. But the last time they saw him, that's the condition his body was in. Well, now he appears to them, and it's Jesus, but it's this new and improved version. It's, not, it's Jesus, but it's a better Jesus. And, and there are things they couldn't explain. They could really touch him. They could really hug him. He was real there. But how in the world did he get through the door? I mean, he was... <laughs> You know, the door, it, 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 it talks about the doors being locked. And all of a sudden, he just appears. That's spooky. And they thought, maybe this is a spirit. This is his ghost. And he says, no, spirit doesn't have a body, doesn't have flesh. And then to convince them more, and they still were frightened, he says, you got anything to eat? And he thought that might convince them. He said, because what he chose, he, only, he chose to keep certain wounds. The wounds in his hands, his feet, his side. Everything else is healed. Everything else is, has been made well. But he chooses to keep those wounds and appears to still bear those wounds. So we have the ten apostles with no Thomas. Eight days later, we are told, we have the eleven apostles. In other words, you have the apostles with Thomas. 
and where Thomas makes his confession. And Jesus, again, he shows up. The doors are locked. He doesn't knock. Nobody lets him in, but all of a sudden, he is there. The next... Oh, I did, I'm going to have to just tell you this. We're going to run out of time. Uh, and Because this is in the Gospel of John in the 21st chapter. Sorry about that. You all have to go to John. Look it up yourself in John 21. But what you're going to see in John 21 is at, they, they get to Galilee. And they're waiting. In other words, God, Jesus hasn't appeared to them. <laughs> they are in Galilee. And we have an account of seven of them who go fishing. And they fish all night, and they don't have anything. And then, you know, as they start back, there's somebody that's on the shore, and they've, he's tending a fire, he's cooking some stuff. But he asked if, there, if they'd caught anything. No. But anyway, he told them to, to put it on their nets again and to try it one more time. And, of course, there were so many fish, the boat starts to sink. You have to have both boats coming together. And that's when... You know, they recognize it's the Lord. And Peter, he can't wait to just wait in. I mean, he just takes off. He, he, he dives overboard. So we have the account of the seven apostles as Jesus appears to them when they were fishing. And they end up having breakfast together. Uh, he did the cooking. The fish were already prepared. He invited them to join him for a meal. Now, somewhere in Galilee... Uh, probably the same mountain that he commissions the apostles, that the Great Commission is given, there, are, there is a group of 500 that see him. And that's this, this emphasis that's included in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it says most of those folks were still alive at the time, the, those that Paul wrote the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, they are going to... Uh, receive the you know the apostles will be commissioned by Christ at some point after that 500 and that commissioning of course is what we call the great commission remember it happens in Galilee and then he's going to send them back to Judea because the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out upon them on the day of Pentecost in Judea uh, we are taught in 1 Corinthians at 15th chapter verse 7 that Jesus then appeared to James his half-brother. Okay, James, who was not one of the original apostles, but the half-brother of Christ, you know, one of the natural children of Joseph and Mary, he appears to him. And, of course, he will go on and serve as what we would call the senior pastor at Jerusalem. We're going to have uh, then the 11 apostles together. When they are back, they go back to Judea. And they're going to see Christ ascend vitally. And we're going to have these in, in the book of Acts. You can tell I've kind of run out of just a little bit of time. But they, and they will actually see Jesus in bodily form ascending up into uh, heaven. But then a cloud blocks them out of their sight. And some angels have to appear and say, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing in heaven? In other words, the same Jesus who left this way, he's going to be coming back. But it's, you need to go do what he's told you to do. Well, the last thing he had told him was they needed, because they were back in Judea at that time, he says, you need to wait until you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. And they didn't know how long they were supposed to wait. But basically he says, now you'll know when the Holy Spirit comes. Turns out they waited 10 days. You're going to have then Paul seeing the risen Christ and his first time he sees the risen Christ will be on the road to Damascus. But five times in Paul's ministry, Jesus appeared to him. And that's recorded in the scriptures. He will say, and that's very unusual. In other words, he didn't say that he had a vision of Christ or, or you know, he had this feeling of his presence. He said, Jesus showed up. He appeared to me. It's one reason that he can claim to be an apostle. Because apostles are, are called by the risen Christ. You have to have to see the risen Christ. I have no problem with folks if they are an apostle. But you're, you're going to have to meet the standards. <laughs> uh, this is not a title that men claim you know, to, to, do, to hold the office biblically. The risen Christ commissions you. You have to see the risen Christ directly. 
And then, of course, it's always a pioneer ministry going into areas where the gospel had not been preached. And the ministry of an apostle is always confirmed with signs and wonders. And it goes in, and then you establish congregations, and you raise up the leadership, and then you, you move on. Uh, the last uh, uh, of Jesus appearing to one of his apostles is made mention of in the book of Revelation where John the Apostle on the Isle of Patmos, he says early in that book, he says, Jesus showed up. Jesus appeared to me. And here's what he said. And here's what he looked like. And then here's what happened after that. So there are a number of proofs that are offered to a searching heart that Jesus really did rise from the dead according to the scriptures. Everything has to fit. He had to die according to the scriptures. He had to be buried according to the scriptures. He had to rise according to the scriptures. Everything has to fit. And we're out of time and y'all have been very patient. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are alive forevermore. Thank you that you are present with us right now. And all that you have ever been, you are at this moment. You are welcome in our hearts. You are welcome in our families. You are welcome in this congregation. Lord, you're the one who makes life worth living. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.